Hello and welcome to the practical guide to the Surface Pro 4. Today I'm going to show you how to get your Surface initially set up and some things that you'll definitely want to do as you set up your device. So here we are at a new factory image of a Surface and we are going to set up our time zones and we are going to accept the license agreement I'm going to go ahead and pair our surface pen. Okay, device connected. We're going to go ahead and connect into the Wi Fi network. Now, here's something that I would personally uh, do at this point. Microsoft wants to turn absolutely everything on uh, as, it, as you set up this device. And there's a lot of things you probably don't want on because they, A, will eat a lot of battery, um, but also, you know, might be a privacy concern. Uh, so you, what you want to do is to go down here and click Customize Settings. And we will scoot that in a little bit. Um, so the first will personalize your speech typing and input by sending context and calendar details along with other associated input data to Microsoft. So I would turn that off. Um, typing and inking data recognition. I tend to err on the side of not sending them anything that I don't want to because A, if you do this, it's going to be sending bits of data in the background which eats up processor cycles it eats up bandwidth. It just is going to wait. It's going to drain your battery quicker with every little thing you turn on. So one thing you may want to do is let apps use your advertising ID for experiences across apps. That may be something you want to leave on if you're a heavy user of Microsoft Store apps. Um, if you want to let Skype integrate with your address book, which I don't, and I don't want to do any of this. The location you may want on if you use the maps. Um, I'm going to leave that off as well, personally. Connectivity and error reporting. Uh, this basically will <laughs> automatically connect your Surface to Wi-Fi hotspots. I don't want it to do this. I don't want to automatically connect to my friends' networks. And I'm going to set and turn all of this stuff off so far. Okay, use smart screen online services to help protect against malicious content and downloads and sites loaded by Microsoft browsers and store apps. Um, this is probably a good idea to leave on if you are giving this device to someone who does not recognize uh, when there is some sort of malware popping up on their screen. If they're, if they're someone really prone to getting viruses, I would leave that on. Um, I trust myself to know which websites I should be visiting, and uh, sometimes it, if you're trying to download something, it won't let you. Uh, so I tend to leave this off, but that one I would say, depending on your experience level, if you're a person who gets viruses a lot, I would leave that on if you kind of can identify, oh, this is not right, and, and know what to click on and what not to click on, you're probably okay. Um, page prediction, this is also an alternative uh, well, it's an option for you, but I, I leave it off. It might make some websites quicker, but it's going to eat through data a lot quicker. It's going to waste battery. It, basically, if you go to a website, it's going to auto-load the websites that are on the top links in that website. And it speeds up the page load, but if you don't end up going to that site anyways, you just downloaded a bunch of data you don't need. So I leave this off. Um, I also, on my mobile devices turn off getting updates and sending updates to other computers. Uh, I do. I leave that on my desktop computer so they can kind of help, you know, the network stream. But on my wireless devices where battery is an issue, I just turn it off. So let's go back. And at this point, uh, if you're using this in conjunction with work, you choose my organization and my organization and connect it to a domain. I'm not going to be doing that at this point. 
And at this point, you will log in with your Microsoft account. And you click sign in. Okay, now we have the option to turn on Windows Hello. And this is another one of those things where it might use your battery a little bit more that if you turn on this feature. I'm going to say no thanks maybe later right now, although that is a great feature to have set up, but we'll cover that in another video. Okay, Cortana. If you want to use Cortana, that's a personal preference. If you like it, use it. Uh, I'm going to say not now. And there you go. You have initially set up your Surface device. Okay, there are a few things that you absolutely, absolutely must do. The first one is you need to check for updates. Especially on this device, the Surface Pro 4, you need to make sure you're on the latest firmware. Otherwise, you may have any number of issues uh, with uh, drivers, blue screening, um, the most recent firmware updates are actually really helpful in alleviating a lot of the issues that people have with Surface with regard to battery life, with regard to uh, power loss, uh, with regard to drivers crashing, uh, things like that. So step one, run Windows Update. Once it reboots your computer, run it again. Reboot your computer and run it again. Make sure you have every last Windows Update. That is step one. So I hope that helps you get set up when you get your brand new Surface Pro 4 uh, back from the Microsoft Store or in the mail. Um, but those are the things you want to look for and those are the things you want to set up initially so that you are good to go on your Surface device. Be sure to subscribe to the Practical Guide to the Surface Pro 4. In upcoming videos we will see the best programs to use with the Surface Pro 4. Uh, my personal selection of applications that I install on every device, how to use tablet mode, how to set up Windows Hello, and all kinds of other great tips and tricks for your Surface Pro 4 device. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. We'll see you later.